Super Bowl has been decided. Who will play has been determined. But what about your menu? Have you figured that out yet? Well, if not, have no fear. We got you covered. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, back to share another recipe video. And in today's recipe video, I have four super easy but delicious appetizers for you to serve at your Super Bowl party. Now, I don't know what Super Bowl food means to you, but to me, it means something that is tangible, not so messy, something that I can eat while I'm socializing and watching the game. So that's the kind of recipes that I have for you today. And I actually got a chance to try all four of these recipes out on Saturday night on my family. We had a huge gathering here together and I made all four of these recipes and they were all the rave. So I'm super excited to share them with you guys. But if what I have just doesn't tickle your fancy, have no fear. We still have you covered because in the description box below is a playlist of a huge set of ladies who want to share some appetizer recipes with you. So there is a wide variety in that description box. Like I said, we pretty much got you covered. If you don't like what I have, I'm pretty sure you will like what somebody else has and we can all help inspire your Super Bowl menu. So so with no further ado, let's go down to the counter and I'll show you guys what we're making today. So for our first recipe, we are making bacon wrapped barbecue weenies. These are so good, you guys. And this is a recipe that you can structure towards any of your dietary preferences, whether you don't really care about counting calories or whether you want to do something more low carb. So for this recipe, you're only going to need a one pound package of bacon. Then you're going to need small hot dog weenies. These are the Hillshire Little Beef Franks. Sometimes you'll know them as little smokies and then you need some barbecue sauce I'm actually using the G Hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce I wanted to make this on a little bit more of a low-carb version so I can indulge at the party but you guys can use any barbecue sauce that you like I will tell you though however everybody was asking me for the type of barbecue sauce that I used on this particular recipe because everyone enjoyed it so much so once we get started the first thing that we're going to need to do is cut our bacon completely in half because we need to double the amount of bacon strips that we have we're going to open up our package of beef franks and then that's right if you guessed it we're going to go ahead and wrap each piece of bacon around each hot dog individually so once we're done wrapping the bacon around the hot dogs then we'll get it into the pan We did only have three little hot dogs left, which is why that ratio of cutting that one pound bacon in half is perfect for that one package of hot dogs. And then you guys, we're just gonna take all of those hot dogs that we wrapped in bacon, and we're going to put them in a oven safe pan, and you're going to place them seam down. Wherever you stopped with that bacon and it created a seam, you're gonna put that part down into the pan. And then we're gonna put it into the oven at 425 degrees for about 35 minutes. And then I pulled them out because I wasn't ready for the last step yet. So I left them in there to cook, and and then I pulled them out till I was ready to use them. And once I was ready to use them, I just dumped the barbecue sauce onto the already cooked bacon and hot dogs. And then I stuck them back in the oven for just another five or 10 minutes just to get them super hot. You can tell how like the glaze thickened and almost caramelized. I threw some toothpicks in it and I had the perfect party pleaser. You truthfully can't go wrong with hot dogs, bacon, and barbecue sauce. 
So now we're on to our next recipe and that's right guys, it's only three ingredients yet again. So we're going to need another pound of bacon, but then you're going to need a bag of tater tots and then a small bag of shredded cheese, approximately the two cups. So the only thing you don't see here that you're going to need is skewers. I ended up changing it up a little bit because the skewers that my mom had were not the kind that I needed. I asked her for skewers. She said, yeah, I have skewers. And I, she didn't realize I needed the wood ones. She gave me metal ones, which did not serve for this purpose, which you guys will see in just a second. But we're going to start off first by throwing this bacon in the pan. We want to get this all cooked up and chopped down and ready to go. So we're just going to stick this in a that same oven. This was cooking while that other bacon bacon was cooking as well those bacon wrapped hot dogs I was making all this stuff at the exact same time so that oven was still going at that 425 degrees which is generally too hot for me to make bacon I like to do a very low and slow when it comes to bacon but in this particular instance since I was trying to limit the space that I was using in the oven it was completely fine as long as you watch it because you want it crispy anyways and it doesn't really matter how you place it in the pan just because if it sticks together it's not a big deal we're going to chop it down all anyway and then we're going to add the tater tots to the pan you can see we have our hot dogs cooking in there our tater tots and bacon go in so now you can see our bacon when it was all done cooking it was the perfect temperature once it cooled for me to chop it down now once the tater tots are cool here's where you guys would put them on a skewer Again, I didn't have a skewer, so I had to improvise. I would have put the tater tots onto a skewer and laid the skewers onto the pan and then covered it with cheese and bacon. That was literally my intention and that's something that you guys can still do or you can do it this way because all you need to do is throw your tater tots on a pan. You're going to cover them with that cheese and bacon and then you're going to stick them back in the oven. Once that cheese and bacon melts, I took all the tater tots and put it in the little dish and then I threw toothpicks in there you guys and it ended up being amazing. Everybody was able to just take with a toothpick little bits of their tater tots with cheese and bacon. They were dunking it in sour cream and it worked out fabulous so now we're on to our third recipe and although it looks like a lot of ingredients you guys really only need three basic ingredients in this so basically we need taco seasoned ground beef I have a little over a pound and a half here and then you're going to need some shredded cheese I prefer the cheddar jack it's more of a Tex-Mex kind of flavor and then you're going to need some kind of chips I'm using the Tostitos scoops the scoops are really going to give you that individual taco feel and then the rest of the ingredients you guys see here are literally just toppings you guys can do any kind of toppings you like i have salsa sour cream i have shredded lettuce and tomatoes however you like to dress your tacos but that's essentially what we're making here is little tiny individual tangible and holdable tacos so we're just going to start off by browning up our ground beef and once our brown beef is all ground up we're going to throw in that seasoned taco mix So once you go ahead and add that taco mix into your ground beef and mix it all the way through, I have a tiny little trick that I like to do with ground beef when I add any kind of seasoning. I just added a splash. It actually came out a little bit more than a splash. I was using one of those pure water filters and it was super full. So it came out a little bit more than a splash, but it's not a big deal. I put in between a half a cup and a cup of water and I continue to keep stirring and mixing that pan until you can tell that all the water is gone, but that really just helps bring out that really vibrant taco flavor by just adding a little bit of water that really works for any seasoning packet that you add to ground beef like that it'll really draw out the flavor when you add a little bit of water and just kind of let it stew and break down so now that our meat is done we're going to take our scoops and we're going to lay our scoops out as many as you could possibly fit on to a sheet pan because like I said essentially we're making individual tacos so once you have as many as you possibly can fit onto the pan we're going to go back with a spoon and you're going to add ground beef into each little bit of chip which is why I say the scoops work best in this instance because it's literally making like a pocket to hold all of our ingredients in. So 
So of course, once we're done with the ground beef, we're just gonna come back and top all those little chips with some of that shredded cheese. And once you give this whole entire thing a cover and everything is has a good layer of shredded cheese on top, we're just gonna stick this back in the oven. I had that oven good and hot, so you really have to watch it so your chips don't burn, but I was still able to get a nice melt on those chips and then I served them alongside with that shredded lettuce, the tomato, the sour cream, the salsa and everybody was saying how awesome that that was it was almost like nachos but like i said you could hold each one like an individual taco and now you guys were on to my favorite recipe of all and this was the largest hit at this party and it does seem like of a lot of ingredients but some of these ingredients are optional and it really was way more simple than it appears to be when you see all the ingredients that are here but we're going to make an italian hero that is baked inside of crescent rolls so you do need two things of crescent rolls and then here are the cold cuts that we need so i got a uh, half a pound of pepperoni i got some provolone i got genoa salami and then some smoked ham. You really need about a half a pound of each and then we're going to lay those out in a ring that we make with these crescent rolls and then I do have some of these deli sliced mild pepper rings and roasted red peppers. The recipe really is better to get that true Italian flavor with those two ingredients but not everybody at the party liked peppers so I'm only going to do half of the ring with just that. But once that you're ready to get started you're going to get a cookie sheet. There's no need to grease it as normal the crescents are buttery enough and then you're just going to start by laying these around in a circle so that they're overlapping and patting them down together so that they stick. Once I got around to the circle and I realized how many pieces I had left, I had to start widening the circle and making it bigger and bigger. So you'll have to play and manipulate with the dough a little bit until you get like a nice big round circle and you've used all of your pieces. But once you use all of your pieces, you're gonna go back and smush the center together so all those pieces stick. And then now it's time to layer our cold cuts. So I started first with the ham and I used the ham and folded it just at that base part of the crescent ring all the way around and then I just went ahead and repeated that with all of the other steps. So once I was done using the ham, then I went ahead and layered the pepperoni. As for your provolone, I took those circles of cheese and I cut them in half. It was way too hard to do one circle of cheese without it melting over. So by me cutting it in half, I was able to manipulate it in whatever direction I wanted so that it completely covered all of the meat without spilling over into the rest of the ring. Once you're done with the provolone, you're gonna come back and top it off with that salami. Literally that simple, you guys. So if you wanna stop there, you could. If you wanna continue with the roasted red peppers and the pepper rings like I did, then you can. Now, just a little hint, those roasted red peppers inside of the jar, it is a whole pepper skin with the insides taken out. So you wanna slice that in half so you have a nice flat red pepper to place on top of the ring. And then I topped it with those little pepper rings. And then now it was time to fold it over. So you can tell when I first started that I was kind of making the pieces touch together so that there was no open spaces and then I realized that that was impossible there wasn't enough of the crescent dough it wasn't wide enough for you to actually do that so you were going to have some space showing so I tried to manipulate that the best that I can and then as I was moving along I noticed that there was a lot of juice on the pan so I asked my mom to pick Pass me a paper towel and I use a paper towel to kind of get all of that pepper ring juice you don't want that to bake into your bread and make your bread soggy so I wiped that up the best that I could and then I continued going along and closing up our ring so once you have finished pushing all of those crescent roll pieces and tucking them tightly underneath that's what you end up finishing with and then I slid it in the oven you can see everything else is out of the oven by now so I did drop that temperature down to three 
150 degrees you do not want to burn your bread and I only did that for as long as the bread needed to cook all you're really doing is heating up those inside ingredients anyways and here's how I served it at the end of the night inside of a tray with a little bit of olives in the middle it was very much like an Italian feel by the time I got a chance to turn the camera on there had already been pieces taken from this i had to close the ring the ring was actually bigger than that you guys but this was the whole spread of food that we had for this party i made all these things and got a chance to try them out at this party which was perfect it allowed me to film them for you guys and still feed my family with all of these delicious appetizers so i hope you enjoyed these recipes and we helped to inspire your super bowl menu if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you guys are new here make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned you guys are going to see a more detailed video of the rest of this spread of food since i did vlog this party that i made this food for if you guys are looking for more menu ideas and what i have here for you today doesn't work make sure to click that playlist down below so that you can see everybody that's in this collab who has ideas for you guys i love you guys all so much and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys